Welcome to Neil Shaw Physics. So any physics student knows the problem where there's a block sliding down a ramp, but all of those ramps are straight. Now let's deal with a problem where the ramp isn't straight. I took this image of this graph straight from Desmos. It is the function y is equal to e to the power of negative x. As you can see, there is a block somewhere on that ramp and we will be using Lagrangian mechanics to find the equation of motion for that block. If you have seen any of my other videos, you know that the first thing that we do is try to find the kinetic energy. So I'm looking at this block and ramp, and I really don't know how to find this kinetic energy. I know that the velocity will always be tangent to the ramp, which could mean a derivative of some sort. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. So let's start with what we do know. If there's anything we know about the system, it's that the block has to be touching the ramp at all times. For this problem, clearly the block will be a little bit off of the ramp, but let's just assume that the point that we're trying to find the equation of motion for is always on the ramp. We know that the position of this block is going to have the vector x comma e to the power of negative x. This just means that when you're at the origin and you know the x value, that means you know the y value is going to be e to the power of negative x. One other thing that we know is that the velocity is just the derivative of the position with respect to time. We have the position. The position is equal to the, ve the vector x comma e to the power of negative x. So that means the velocity is just the time derivative of that vector. But how do you find a derivative of a vector? Well, that's easy. It's just component by component. So we can start out with the time derivative of x, which is just going to be x dot. To take the time derivative of e to the power of negative x, you need to use the chain rule. So you start out by taking the derivative with respect to x, which is equal to negative e to the power of negative x. Then you multiply by the time derivative of x, which is x dot. So you get negative e to the power of negative x times x dot. I always like to write the exponentials at the end, so I'm just gonna rewrite this as x dot comma negative x dot e to the power of negative x. So now we have almost everything we need to make the kinetic energy. So we know the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half m times v squared. Using the Pythagorean theorem and vector components, we know that this is equal to 1 half m times the velocity in the x direction squared plus the velocity in the y direction squared. Luckily for us, we have those. We took the time derivative of the position vector to get the velocity vector, and those two parts are just components that make up the velocity. So finding the velocity is just like finding the magnitude of this vector. After we do that, we get that k is equal to 1 half m times x dot squared plus x dot squared e to the power of negative 2x. From there, I'm just going to factor out an x dot squared because we can, and you get that k is equal to 1 half m x dot squared times the quantity 1 plus e to the power of negative 2x. That is it for the kinetic energy. Now we can move on to the potential energy, which is a lot easier. In this case, there is only gravitational potential energy, which is only dependent on the mass and the y-coordinate. This gets us to u is equal to mgy. But we have everything in terms of x, so I can change that to mg e to the power of negative x. We have our kinetic energy, we have our potential energy. We can now form our Lagrangian. Remember, the Lagrangian is equal to the difference between the kinetic and potential energies. So I'm just going to select this, then put this down there, and then select the potential energy and put that over there 
And remember, it's kinetic energy minus potential energy. We can start out with the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. So when we look at the first term, the entire first factor of that first term is a constant, so we can just keep that exactly the same, and then multiply by the derivative with respect of the second part. And that is going to be equal to negative 2 times e to the power of negative 2x. And for the partial with respect to x of the second part, everything stays the same except you have to multiply by a negative 1, which makes the negative into a positive. So I'm just going to rewrite this, putting the positive term first. So I'll start out with mg times e to the power of negative x, and then I will subtract mx dot squared times e to the power of negative 2x. Next, I need to do the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. For this, when you look at the first term, the entire second factor of that first term is all constant, so I'm going to keep that the same. And for the first factor, just use the power rule, multiply by 2, and subtract the power by 1. And after doing that, you get m times x dot times the quantity 1 plus e to the power of negative 2x. And lastly, we just need to take the time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. For this, we need to use the product rule. So the product rule says that the derivative of two things being multiplied together is equal to the derivative of the first part, which is m times x double dot times the second part, which stays the same, 1 plus e to the power of negative 2x. But then you have to add that with the first part times the derivative of the second part. And for this, we will have to use the chain rule again. So 1 goes to 0, but then you have negative 2 times e to the power of negative 2x, and then multiply by x dot. And I'm just going to rewrite this in a little bit nicer way, and then I'll get mx double dot times 1 plus e to the power of negative 2x, and then minus 2mx dot squared times, uh, not parentheses, e to the power of negative 2x. Now, if you remember the Euler-Lagrange equation, it says that the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to our coordinate is equal to our time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity of that coordinate. This means that this is equal to that. And as usual with a block sliding down a ramp, the mass doesn't matter, so all the m's cancel out. There are a few things in this equation that can be simplified or just rewritten, rewritten a little bit better. So I'm going to do that. So differential equations are typically written from greatest degree derivative, derivative to least degree. So we start out with x double dot. That's multiplied by 1 plus e to the power of negative 2x. And then if you see the term with x dot, or more specifically x dot squared, there are two terms like that. And they're like terms, so you can just add them together, and you end up with negative x dot squared e to the power of negative 2x, and then lastly you just subtract g e to the power of negative x, and all of that is equal to zero. You could be done with this. This is a differential equation which describes the motion of this block sliding down the ramp, but where the coordinate is the x-axis. So this will be tracking the x-coordinate of the block wherever it is. However, obviously, if you have the x-coordinate, you have the y-coordinate. If you wanted a differential equation that models the y-coordinate, you could do that. So let's just do that. For this, we need a relationship between x and all of its time derivatives, and then y and all of its time derivatives. So we start out with y is equal to e to the power of negative x. Taking the natural log on both sides and multiplying by negative 1, you get that x is equal to the negative natural log of y. 
taking the time derivative of both sides, you get that x dot is equal to negative 1 over y, but then multiplied by the time derivative of y, which is y dot, which is equal to negative y dot over y. Taking the time derivative on both sides again will get you x double dot. So x double dot is equal to, and for this we need to use the quotient rule. So I'll just take out the negative because it's a constant, and then you start out with the derivative of the top, which is y double dot multiplied by the bottom, and then you subtract the top multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, which is just another y dot, so that's y dot squared, and all of that divided by the bottom squared. That's just y squared. And from here, we can simplify it a bit by distributing the negative and also distributing the y squared. After you do that, you get y dot squared divided by y squared minus y double dot divided by y. So now I'm just going to copy the equation we have in terms of x, and then the page is about to end, so I'm just going to copy everything that we have and then put it on the next page. You would think that making these substitutions would make this differential equation a lot more complicated, but in reality it doesn't because a lot of the uh, exponentials will then simplify down to just a y or a negative y or y squared. So now let's start substituting. We know what x double dot is, that's just this right over here. So I'm going to put that down there and then that's multiplied by 1 plus and e to the power of negative 2x is just y squared. And then you subtract x dot squared. So x dot squared is going to be y dot squared divided by y squared. This is multiplied by e to the power of negative 2x, which if you remember is just y squared. And then you subtract g times y, and all that is equal to 0. Multiplying those two binomials together is pretty standard. You get y dot squared over y squared, and then plus y dot squared minus y double dot over y, and minus y double dot y. And then the rest, the y squares, will cancel out, so that's just y dot squared, and negative gy stays the same. Notice there is a y dot squared and a negative y dot squared, which will cancel out. Just to get rid of everything in the denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by y squared. This will get rid of the y squared in the first term, then you just have to multiply y double dot by y in the second term, have y cubed in the third term, and y cubed in the fourth term. For this next step, I will move everything to the other side of the equation, basically multiplying by negative 1, and then factor based on degree. So for y double dot, there is a y cubed plus y. Then for y dot, there's just a negative y dot squared. And then lastly, we add g times y cubed. And all of that is equal to 0. This is the end of the video. In this video, we accomplished how to find the equations of motion for a block sliding down an exponential ramp. Imagine doing this with Newtonian mechanics. It would be very difficult as the normal force of the ramp on the block will be constantly changing directions and magnitude. Thank you for watching Neil Shot Physics and this playlist on Lagrangian mechanics. I will be moving on to another topic sometime in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Thank you again for watching. Bye.